<laughs> okay. Um hello. Um <laughs> welcome to our fourth really went up to review. So um this time it is Jono's turn. So it's my turn to choose the number on Jono's list. The last time you chose number four, which was speed. Yeah, and that was all right, wasn't it? Right, you are just saying you can pick any number except four. One to ten, but not four. Um, nine? Nine. Final answer? Nine. Nine. Hmm. It's not a horror. That's good. It was made in 1999. Okay. It stars Pierce Brosnan. Ooh. And Rene Russo. And it's a remake of a 1960s heist film that starred Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway. They've probably guessed it. What is it, Johnny? It's the Thomas Crown Affair. Okay. <laughs> Q. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god, could they be more obvious? <laughs> yeah, they look like um Detectives. No, no. Undercover detectives. Yeah, they look like um Ghostbusters. You checking that out? No. What what what? You just went <laughs> I was I, I was trying to hold your sneeze. Up. I was holding in a sneeze. Not going. I was holding in a sneeze. Yeah, of course. Okay. Why is he so Because it's a fake painting. He's duped them. Yeah, so he's allowed to have a fake painting, isn't he? Yeah, but where's the Monet? Oh. <laughs> well, like, how does she know that he's actually got it? Well, she does. She, she doesn't. She doesn't now. Yeah. So that's because. Don't you get it yet? Haven't you figured out the intention? Why, why this is all happening? It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. doing it for fun. No, no, I know that. But the thing is, he's not a sack of shit because the fact that he's, he didn't have the Monet painting and she thought that he did, she went and stole his fake Monet. as seductive as the chess game. Still? I'm not wearing anything. Honestly. I agree with the soundtrack. It is a good soundtrack, isn't it? It's yeah. racy. Oh, 
<laughs> that is such a good film. <laughs> and now the famous theme song. Moriarty! There's someone actually all called Moriarty! Oh, that's so cool. Did you see that? It said none of it was filmed inside a museum. So first off, I'd like to say I <laughs> I really like that film. Great, I'd call that a win. Yeah. Yeah. I won, I really I won, like that film. I won her over on one of my films. <laughs> I like uh, Piers Brosnan as an actor. I like I like his acting skills. You know, whatever. Um, and quite a few of the films that I've watched that he's been in, I've enjoyed. Have you seen anything else he's been in besides Bond? Uh, and Mamma Mia. <laughs> I've seen that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have. I couldn't name them right at the moment, but he did. Um, mean. He did Remington. Have you seen Remington? No. Sort of Remington Steel. No. He did one when he was. Much when he was younger, before he did Bond, and yeah. when he was still doing Remin Remington, one of his early films, I've forgotten what it's called, it's something like Live Wire or Hot Wire, yeah. where, where he plays a bomb disposal expert and it, he's trying to suss out. There's something to do with explosives in drinking water. Uh, I've only seen it once or twice, but I remember him doing that when he was young. Mm -hmm. Which was quite good. I remember. I remember liking it the first time I saw it. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's all fine. It's all right. So, scene in therapist office at the start. Um, therapist played by Faye Dunaway from the original Thomas Crown Affair. I think she looked really, really well and, and really uh, uh, age defying. Is that? Is that? She looked well for her age. She looked, she, she aged, she ages well. She's aged, aged well. well, yeah. Uh, no, 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 just my train of thought is going to die and you keep jumping in. Please, please, just this one thing and then you can say it. Okie dokie. Okay, so it got me thinking. So I found it interesting that it was um, within a museum. Um, was it MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, or was it something? I'm not sure. No, I don't know. Never mind. Actually, at the end of the film, it says none of it was filmed no, it in, was a, John, John, in an art gallery. No, it wasn't. John McTiernan, the director, um, in the commentary of this DVD, he's actually said that it was a specially built studio um, for the interior shots, um, but it was copied perfectly, uh, apparently. Just, just for those of you who haven't seen this, um, this is 1999, so it's not old, but it's, what is it, 16, 17, 18 years? Um, it's about a guy, it's about a, it's about a, a rich, wealthy biz, businessman um, who is, but he's very, very bored with his yuppie life. And he's, he has a kind of kleptomania, I guess you could call it. He, he just wants a bit of excitement in his life, so he decides uh, to steal a Monet painting from the museum. Um, and yeah, his briefcase is um, in instrumental in helping him do that. And the first couple of opening scenes are very sort of... Um, it's about, you know, one minute he has the briefcase, the next minute he doesn't, and the next minute he does, and you kind of, watching it, they're, they're very subtle with it, and watching it, you kind of ask yourself, did he just have his briefcase, or did he just put it down, mm. or did, and of course, later on, it's all sort of obvious, or, you know, answered as to what happens yeah. to the briefcase. It so, wasn't, it wasn't quite a, oh, what is it, 
continuation. You know when they say you have every obviously uh, not all scenes are filmed at the same time and there's that thing about continuation, that's it. Continuation. So you you slightly think, oh actually should he have actually had his briefcase yeah. with him then? And they didn't you know, they didn't do it right or what? But very yeah. clever. Very clever, clever yeah. There's a mix up of artifacts. Um, apparently there's supposed to be a sarcophagus coming into the museum, but it's a it's a horse, and so, and I could I could tell there was something dodgy going on from the start. Um, that horse has been used or as a Trojan horse type thing. So men come out the horse, and that was clear. That wasn't there wasn't any kind of mix up. It was clear that something had gone wrong. Then these people came out. Um, I I might um I might so far the film is running smoothly for me. There's no annoyances or anything that because okay. So in previous films you've seen me kind of get quite passionate about about points that I thought oh that could have been quicker or or that that should have been they should have had someone in there or or that was really obvious they they just had to turn their heads and see the criminals. But this, it's so far, had been really good, really running smoothly. I didn't think there was anything that could have been it's well edited. obvious. Yeah, it's it was well edited. And I think the whole film is like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll do as well. But I'm just saying up to this point, I also thought yeah, yeah. that. But definitely. it's very. It is. John McTiernan is quite good at that kind of film. Die Hard's the same. It move. It moves very smoothly, and it's well edited. Yeah, he does. He's a good director, John McTiernan. He did the Die Hard movies. I also um, oh, what's it called? agreed with Jono um, at one point he said oh it's a really great soundtrack and I was like it's yeah awesome it soundtrack. really is. I also like that they keep um, a lot of the classic scenes in from the original. Um, they This scene here with um, where he's, he's, um, he's selling uh, he's selling stock to business to business associates, and he has to sign a contract. And they're just sitting around a table waiting to light their cigars, and and then he signs the contract, and they all start celebrating. And then he says, "You you you you, um, you paid thirty million more than other your rivals were were offering." And that, of course, they immediately their jaws drop. Because I, that's a scene from the original. I've seen the original, and it's they're two very different. Because in, in the original, the Steve McQueen version, it's a bank heist. It's not. It's not a, a painting. It's money, but it's the same sort of thing. And, and that's one scene from the original. He says he signs the contract, and they celebrate. And he says you're overpaid, and walks out the door. Um, and also, there are other classic lines from the original, like you know, he says, "Do you always get your man?" And she says. Yes, and he says, you think you'll get me, that's from the original as well, um, and things like that. And But one thing, this was actually controversial when it first came out. Pierce Brosnan was approached um, by film critics about the fact that the chess scene wasn't uh, in this one. There's a famous seductive chess scene between Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway where they, it's a bit, it, it's replaced in this one by the dance, the, 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 oh, the yeah. sexy dance. Yeah. Um, where she's wearing like yeah. a see-through dress, like you can see so much. And that is very. That scene is very, very sexy and very seductive, and it's very with music and it, you can, it's very passionate. So the the atmosphere from the chess scene is still there, but it's very different. I mean, that chess scene is said to be quite famous. Um, you know, so. They're playing. Steve McQueen and Fader are just playing chess. It starts to get very heated and very sexy, and she's you know man manipulation of the pieces. And yeah, it's that, <laughs> you see that's probably why it was left out because today's youth would, you know finds it would find that kind of giggly you know a bit yeah. A bit. No, I was finding it freely when you were doing. I was right. laughing at that. <laughs> well, that's what they do. She does that. Okay, she, okay, okay. But I think I, I think people today would find that kind of scene a bit carry on, a bit sort of Kenneth William. 
So then you wonder, okay, so once Piers takes the painting, you wonder if he's one of the baddies. Then you're like, oh, okay. And then you think, and Jono and I had a discussion about this during it. Why did he take the painting? And why do you think he did? Well, I thought because of after, in the next scene, he's doing a, um, a golfing tournament and he puts a big bet on this golfing tournament and he seems to just be throwing this money out. So I was saying, well, maybe it's because he likes expensive things and using expensive money and just kind of throwing it out there like he doesn't really care about it, you know? So that's why I was saying maybe he just, he stole the painting because he likes expensive things. And that's it, you know, that's why I thought it was. Um, and now? Is that, is that new No, saying? no, no. Now I think it's for fun. Like John, John said it to me and I thought, actually, yeah, yeah, it's for fun that he just likes to do that sort of thing. Remember what she said when the boat crashed? He, she said he crashed the boat because he liked the splash. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of person, you know, he does that. He does it just, just for, for something fun, yeah. I've heard that there for are... the thrills! I've heard that there are people like that in the world. There are rich, successful people, but they're still not happy unless they're doing something. You know, um, they do things for the thrill of it. Thrill seeker, e ego, yeah. what are they called? These, these mountaineers and, you know... Extreme sports, one way, but... Yeah, the, like that. They, they, they just, they don't, yeah, they want to have fun and just use their yeah. money and just it makes them it. it makes them feel alive. Yeah. Sometimes money and success. Thrill seekers. Thrill seekers. Sometimes money yeah. and success doesn't make you feel alive and that's what no. they miss. So that's why he does it, you know, he just wants to, what's the excitement? Another nitpick was, why was the woman so suspicious of um, uh, Pierce Brosnan's character so quickly? Like, I just, I don't feel that enough evidence was kind of shown to us, shown to her mm. before she kind of clocked on or kind of got suspicious of him. I kind of agree. So, I kind yeah. of agree. It's just a look, isn't it? He goes, the first time that she sees him is when he goes in to the police station to identify the... Yeah, and, and she then, almost is suspicious of him straight away. The, the only thing that she notices is the fact that he's kind of carefree about the warnings that he's being given. Yeah. Because the thing is, spoiler alert, the thing is, the three, the four guys who attempt to steal the painting before him, they are hired by him as a diversion so that he can, so they he knows them and he, he knows that he, they pose no threat to him. So he's kind of, when they warn, when the police warn him that identified suspects, you know, can sometimes threaten people, you know, who, who grass up on them. Uh, and he says, no, 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 I'll, I'll be alright, she's <laughs> fine. So she kind of notices that kind of carefree attitude, because of course he's not bothered because he knows these thieves. So that's the only thing really that she has to go on. But I kind of agree with what you're saying, it does happen kind of quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. But she does have an inkling um, of logic behind her suspicion. Um, yeah. They, they found out or they, they suspected and was or were very kind of set on the fact that Piers Brosnan stole the painting. And that's it. And that's yeah. it. And then you think, well, what else is there? And I mean, I don't feel like it was pulled out too long, you know, after that. I think it was good because then they had found out the truth in our minds. They didn't know it was the truth in their minds. They were just very highly suspicious of it or very set in their minds. They then, the rest of the film was then them proving it or trying to find it. So I thought that was, I thought that was very good. Yeah. To me, it was kind of obvious that the guys were connected to Piers somehow, but I just wasn't sure how. It was almost like it, it did run smoothly, but how? There was something. I yeah. just want to jump in. I, well, I remember distinctly, mm -hmm. when, I, when I first saw the film when I was about 15, 16, I remember thinking the same thing, mm -hmm. just so we're on the same level. I remember thinking to myself, because the thing is, I knew, as I'm sure everyone did, that the, the theft was about him. 
the, you know, Thomas, the Thomas Crown character. Uh, because, well, for one thing, it's a remake, so people know that Thomas Crown's going to do the theft because he does the original. But so when these these other these four guys come in beforehand to attempt to steal mm -hmm. something, there is that kind of question in your mind, like, hang about, what's going on? This can't be yeah. right. They can't. This can't be successful because this is about him. This is about Thomas Crown stealing the painting. So, yeah. So. I guess that kind of, I guess that kind of, that kind of ruins it in a way. Really going in knowing that it's not going to be these guys that's successful, but it's going to be Thomas Crown that's successful because we already know that he is going to be successful because a we know it's called it, the Thomas Crown Affair. And we know the basic plot. It's about a guy who steals a painting. What because you've seen it? Well, well no, because you've read well, it. Trailers and because we know, you know, so and. B, because it's a remake, and you, you know that from the original that Thomas Crown is, is the bank is, is the robber because yeah. he's the robber in the first one. Well, I think so, yeah, go on. So yeah, that does kind of automatically not ruin it, but it does kind of automatically put the question out there about yeah. whether these guys are genuine or not. But I would say from your point of view, so obviously not from my point of view because I've not seen the original. I've not known. No, I'm just agreeing with you. No, no, I know that. I know, no, no, no. And I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say, yes, I can see what you're saying. Um, if I was in your shoes, I would think, well, it's obvious that you're going to know that it's going to be Thomas Crown because mm -hmm. you've seen the original. But what I would do is I would think, right. Um, yeah, OK, so obviously coming into this as a remake, you would know that what it's going to be like but it's kind of the same as any other remake. You know what's going to happen. But it isn't. Well, yeah. Yeah, but you it are. isn't identical. It's not exactly. Well, most remakes are actually identical normally, but you're going to know that anyway because you're coming in. You've seen the original. But to me, it wasn't obvious from the title. You said it's obvious from the title that it's Thomas. Thomas yeah, Crown is going to be the he's going to be the one to take it, but actually, to me, it wasn't. But you still question the four guys stealing the painting. Yeah, you do. No, you did. Yeah, I did. I did because, to me, yes, it's called the Thomas Crown affair, but you don't know how that's going to happen. You do, like okay, okay, let's talk this way. I'm not explaining it properly. You don't know how Thomas Crown is going to be connected in this story. So you didn't so you didn't have an inkling no. that he was going to be involved? No. Not even with the thing about the briefcases? Uh, no. Okay. No. That's interesting. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. It wasn't until he obviously stole the painting right in front of me. Well, yeah. Yeah, obviously. But no, I had no inkling. It's called the Thomas Crown Affair. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. An affair could be an affair of love. Mm. You know, I thought he was going to get it on with his therapist. You never know, you don't know. <laughs> I just love the way that he a that he actually does steal the painting. It's, yeah, it's like over it's over in less than 20 seconds. Yeah. He, when everyone's being rushed out of the museum, yeah. spoiler alert, he just dashes in, grabs the painting, puts it in his briefcase, and yeah. then walks out with the rest of the crowd. It's well, just so... And he's rolled under the metal guard that they've got down. But how he's kept the guard up is he's put his another suitcase in underneath but it's like metal so it can't oh, it's, it's very weird. clever it's over and it come it, as you i think this this would be good if you're not expecting it 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 comes literally out of the blue yeah it's just watching yeah. all of the people being escorted out yeah. and suddenly bam he's into the yeah. room runs puts his glove on runs yeah. snatches the thing off the wall yeah. folds it up into this special folding briefcase thing and then I wasn't run, suspecting at all. And then walks out. Great. Well, maybe that yeah. maybe that's more effective then. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the initial relationship between him and her? He and she, him and her. Uh, it was a bit kind of guarded at the start, and then it kind of got a bit kind of jokey and flirty slightly, and then well, the it thing got is, into they, relationship. Well, the thing is, they start to play each other. That's the thing. She yeah. she starts to play him. Uh, I know it was you, uh, and I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to get you, and I'm going to, you know, mm. blah 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 blah. And he plays her, you know. I do have the painting, but I'm not mm. telling you where it is, uh, you know. And the thing is, I think 
that the boredom thing kind of reflects off both of them. She she mm. also craves excitement. Yeah. In a different kind of way. Thrilling. She, it's she, thrilling for both of them. She needs the excitement of chasing him. Um, and he needs the excitement of being chased. And I think that's kind of what, what they have. They like they kind of deliberately play each other for the thrills, like the, the time like the moment where she throws the thing on the fire, the painting on the fire and that sort of thing. It's it's yeah, it's one big game to both of them. It was quite obvious to me that there was some sort of love interest between them, but I wasn't sure how much for one. Mm. I didn't know if it would just end with kind of harmless flirting or whether it'd get bigger, you know, as this went on I was thinking, okay great, so they're gonna they're getting a bit more into each other. And so yeah, basically I could tell from the start that it was something was gonna happen, but There's, I didn't know how much of a big one. For most of it until the end, it's mostly um, it's mostly passion, um, really. Like they like they do want each other, um, mm -hmm. but for most for most of it, there's not really a love um, between mm -hmm. them until the end, where they where he, he's there on the plane, um, really. That last scene on where he's on the plane is really, in my opinion, the one only moment where you genuinely see love yeah. between them. I think because she was she was crying so yeah. much. You actually felt so sad, and you were ex expecting. Well, I was expecting why right, it just finished like that. Oh, he's yeah. left her. They do. She sent everything back, and then and then he, he, he like brings a hanky round. You like, don't need to cry. And then and she looks at and he's right there and she's like, ah! and then they just stop snogging. So. But that's the thing. I think up until that point, really, it's just yes, they do what they do need each other. Certainly mm. need. There's certainly a need for each other there through through most of the film. Um, but it's the first proper time that you see genuine love between them really, I think, um, expressed as love. But up until then it's just sort of passion, want, need, yeah. desire, excitement. Yeah. But every, every, everything else really except... Actually love. Ob well, at least obvious love anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's different from the original um, in many respects. There are a few scenes that are similar, lines that are that are there from the original, but I like the fact that it's modernised. I mean, I don't think it would be a bank robbery in this day and age because that's kind of old-fashioned. The original was the '60s. This is a, you know, this is a painting, more modern. I like that. Um, so the original's good. Steve McQueen. I've always been a bit of a fan of Steve McQueen. He was a great actor. Um, Faye Dunaway. I like the fact that Faye Dunaway is in this. I'm sure Steve. McQueen would have been as well if he'd still been around. Um, what, would you think, what do you think he would have played? <laughs> I think he, I'm not I think that. I think Steve McQueen would have played one of the cops. I'm not that familiar with Steve McQueen. Great Escape. Yeah. Um, Bullet. He was in Bullet. Um, yeah, I think he would have. How old would he have been? 1999. He would have been quite old, I guess. So I, I think he would have been either one of the museum curators. Oh yeah, he could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or one of the older cops. Um, yeah, because that was another thing. I'm thinking most of the mu museum curators were either really yeah, old yeah. Or, or old, quite old, or kind of young, kind of vulnerable geeky ones you know so then when the, the three or four <laughs> then when the three or four criminals come in like dressed as curators they all look like these big hench kind of muscle yeah, men so muscle men yeah. and it's like how do people not, not realize you know it's like mm. i know who steve mcqueen could have played the guy with the big Black glasses. Um, who runs the museum? The, oh yeah, he, yeah, he's about the right age yeah, and the right yeah. look. I think Steve McQueen would have played him really well. Well, my last point was, and I, it actually says this. <laughs> I really like this movie. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I like it too. So, it's one of my favourite films. Yeah. So I think I think that that draws to end it's, our point. It's thrilling. It's exciting. It's still it's still appealing today. It's it's 15, 16 years old now, but I think it still holds up. It's still very fresh. I think um, still very modern. If you like, if you fancy a good sort of heist film with sexiness and passion <laughs> and a good chase, catch me if you can kind of thing, you know, give it a go if you haven't seen it. It's um, I, I, in fact, I would. You don't have to see the original first to understand this one because they're, although as I say they are similar in some respects, they are still quite different. So the original still holds, it's still good to watch as well, give that a try, but this is a good standalone film as well. Um, yeah. Exciting, thrilling, a good chase film, um, good acting, I think in the supporting actors are good, Dennis Leary is always good I think. Frank Faisal, he's always enjoyable to watch. Um, it's quick. It's yeah. It's it's, it's speedy. It's, it's yeah. It's quick. It's speedy. It's it's keeps you on your toes. Got a big yes, big kind of whoosh through the whole. Okay, so it's good uh, journey through the whole film, and you're really going, but it's not too adrenaline making. So it's enough adrenaline to yeah. kind of keep you going, but if you have a, there's no shootouts. There's no, yeah. there's no, there's no shootout. There's no guns. There's there's no ch there's no car chase sequences. It's just, it's just very clever police chase. Um, Basically, you just keep going, keep going. It's a good journey without too much adrenaline, like yeah. I just said. Yeah. But if you are not, are you? If you're used to getting a lot of adrenaline. Which can actually make you quite this one's annoyed yeah. and and angry and like when I watch things like, like probably speed. you saw it on speed yeah yes. I was gonna say that I get quite ah because it's a, so so much adrenaline that I can't cope most of the time but this is this but this isn't really like, isn't this so is for you, I was able yeah. to watch it and kind of be there you know be there in the presence but not it keeps you it keeps you on the edge of your seat yeah. but only a, an appropriate amount uh, uh, yeah uh, a good amount not too much yeah, yeah you don't feel anxious or antsy but you are yeah and and well, and actually to be honest john i said at the start you've got to really you, watch it you do and, have to pay attention and, and yeah. pay attention otherwise you won't get like i said most well, of it well, and, I, and i was able to which was great well, yeah. yeah. I was personally surprised by that because I had to watch it a couple of times to understand all of it, and you might have to as well. But so you might, if if you sit and really watch it and enjoy it, yeah. you're it, it's likely that you'll understand. Yeah. You have to listen to what they're saying, or because you know, because um, there's like, points like, that I might have not gotten if Jono hadn't said something. Like the bit about the briefcases and the bit about Anna being a forger and spoilers, but you know. They sneak, sometimes they'll sneak bits of dialogue in that are over really quickly, but they can still be quite important, so you need to listen and, and pay attention. But if you're able to do that, then it's enjoyable and it's understandable, so, you know, you'll, you'll give it a try. I like it. It's a good film. It's my kind of film. I like, I like a good heist film. Marks out of ten? Nine. Nine. Nine out of ten. Poof, 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 poof. I am happy with a nine. Yeah, I'll give it a nine. Even Steven. So, uh, we'll flick the coin again next time. Yeah. And we'll do the whole thing again. I would, I would really love it if you could, if, if any of you could just like the video or, or put a comment in the comment section or um or both or or subscribe to our channel i just i would love to see we any response we would love to see any response just from any of you please please i would love to just see any response I, from you guys please as would i i do it i think we do it you know because we needed something you know we, we 
I, I enjoy it, you know, yeah, I'll regardless, enjoy it. And, and we will keep doing it. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And we'll keep, you know, we're still working on some other yeah. playlists, you know, yeah. on our own. Yeah. You know, so hopefully our audience will get bigger. Um, mm -hmm. But we do it because we're, we're, we're liking it. Yeah, because we enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, and we love just putting stuff out there but uh yeah please do anywho it yeah. is midnight it is now 20 past midnight and jono needs to go to bed because oh, he to. has to go to work to and work. earn money to pay for bills and rent and stuff so can i just say i worked very hard yeah you did at my job but it's not anyway let's go see you bye bye bye